Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. And today we're going to drop our budget from 1000 to 500 So you may have seen our last video, $1,000 budget challenge. We played nine holes. Thomas shot a 32, uh, which was pretty solid. That's some, that's some good golf. And now we're dropping that down to $500. Uh, we're at the Second Swing Minnetonka store. We're going to look through uh, the selection out there. And we're going to try and put together a set of 14 clubs for under $500 and then maybe go repeat our scores. So, Thomas, I don't know what you're thinking here because this, this is very different. I mean, I've, I've done a quick look at the selection that we have from, you know, the $1,000 budget to $500 budget. It changes quite a bit and you're getting, getting even older. You're getting down to maybe uh, lower condition quality as well. So what are you looking for uh, out of your uh, $500 budget set? It definitely has changed a lot because with COVID especially, used clubs have been very high demand. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to find those clubs that are a little bit on that more budget side. But $500, I think we can definitely make it work. For me, it's gonna be important to get wedges that have some good clean grooves on them. So I wanna have good control. I wanna have good gapping with my wedges. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure the lofts are accurate. Mm -hmm. And then driver, I wanna make sure that it fits me with regards to the loft and, the, and pretty close to the right golf shaft. But Five hundred dollars. I mean, a driver these days is five hundred dollars right. plus. So it's not going to be brand new. It's going to be you know, some used clubs, kind of mix and match a little bit, and then not always going to be the same brand. Um, but mm -hmm. it's going to be important to make sure we've got a good gapping through the bag as well. Yeah, we'll have to do some thorough searching, of course, of maybe the clearance bins and uh, um, our kind of under you know two hundred dollar iron sets, for example, that we'll be looking through to see what we can find. So, uh, Thomas, why don't we get after it here? Sounds good. So. These are your kind of value drivers where, you know, you're talking 10 plus years old. Um, we've got a huge selection of them, obviously. Um, this is where I spent a lot of my time looking for a driver, but I just wanted to peek one time over here at some of these that are a little more recent, right? And I spotted this one here. Now, high bore is still an old model for sure, but I swing kind of fast, and I like the Tour 9.5 degree head. So the Cleveland High Bore XL, then you've got the Pro Launch Red Grapholoy shaft, which is kind of built for your faster, more aggressive swingers, kind of like me. So $119.99 uh, and in great condition. I think this is a great value for uh, you know, our budget for today. So the fairy wood I've chosen here, three wood. Tour Edge Exotics CB4. This is a 15 degree three wood uh, at $47.99 with a, an Aldella rip shaft at 70 grams stiff. So uh, it's a pretty good value. And Tour Edge has been actually exceptional with fairway woods in the past. They're their exotic series and they kind of update it every year. And so this is kind of an older one for sure, but I really like it. I've played exotics in the past and loved it. So I'm going to go with Tour Edge Exotics. CB4 Tour here for my fairway wood at $47.99. So this hybrid is a Wilson Staff FG Tour. Uh, again, these are, well, these are all older models, so that's not a secret here, but I like this because it's got an 85 gram Aldilla Phenom shaft. It's at 19 degrees, which will go great gapping wise with my 15 degree three wood, and then it'll let me transition into an iron set here pretty smoothly. So for $23.99, the condition's not the best, but the thing is too, a hybrid, there's a chance I don't even use this in my nine holes. So that's something to consider. I didn't want to invest a ton of my budget on a hybrid. So Wilson Staff FG Tour, 19 degrees for $23.99. So it's time for wedges now. And wedges are important because, you know, on almost every hole, right? If you don't, if you miss the green, you gotta go up and down with your wedge. Uh, and of course on short par fours, your approach shot's probably gonna be hit with a wedge. So. Uh, I've got a couple options here now. If you look at these prices, like you can find some $19.99, $19.99, $16.99. Um, and a lot of these are going to be downgraded in price because of the condition of the groups. And so you have to kind of balance out uh, finding a good quality wedge, but at the same time uh, saving you know, in your budget and getting good grooves as well that are still effective. So I think here I found a, an RTX3 Cleveland. Um, it's a little bit of an older model. It's relatively new compared to kind of the budget that I'm putting together here. For $41.99, uh, it does say below average condition. 
which is the rating, which is dropping that price down. Um, but I see the grooves here are not, like it's clearly worn right here, but you can kind of see the, the micro grooves in between are still there. Still, uh, you can still kind of feel them in between the larger grooves. And I like that about this wedge. So definitely not a perfect condition by any means, but I think I'm gonna roll with this one here uh, as my 60 degree wedge in my set at 41.99. Yeah, so I mean, I, I need more than the one wedge. Uh, so I'm looking at something in the 54 degree, right? So I got a 60, I wanna make sure there's proper gapping. I'm looking at 54 degrees for my next wedge. Um, and I, this is also a club that for me, I'm probably not gonna hit too much on the course. It's gonna have to be in that perfect yardage of 100 to 120 yards or so where I'll actually need this wedge. Um, so I don't need to spend a ton. And looking around, I did see this one here. This is a Tour Edge Exotics CB Pro, and it's uh, only $29.99. And you can see it's not you know, terribly damaged, terribly used at all. Uh, does have a forged construction, which will help with a, produce a good feel. Uh, it's right in that proper gapping at 54 degrees, six degrees away from 60. And now in my iron set, I'll be looking for a pitching wedge that's probably in that 47 degree range that can blend in perfectly. Um, so for irons, I did mention I needed a pitching wedge in the set that's gonna be a higher loft, it's 46, 47. So kind of blends together with the wedges that I have. Um, and of course, with the price range we're at, we're gonna be looking at some older models here. And at the same time, I don't want to give up the type of iron that I need, which, as some of you are familiar with, is probably a um, thinner player's iron, but also kind of has some cavity, some forgiveness in there. Um, kind of like, you know, what I play now is I-210, the Ping I-210. Something that's shaped a little bit like that is what I'm looking for here. So we're kind of in the iron sets under $200 sections here. Looking through, And I see these Ben Hogan Apex Edge irons here. This is actually a three through pitching wedge set. And it's got a stiff shaft on there. It's gonna, I mean, all my clubs are stiff shafts, which probably not quite uh, stiff enough. Uh, I'll probably need extra stiff in a normal setting. But this is this iron set I'm gonna go with here. The Ben Hogan Apex Edge three through pitching wedge on, at uh, a stiff shaft here and the price range of $149.99 for the whole set, that's uh, pretty solid to me. I don't know for sure if this is my putter yet, but I have, after calculating, about $45, $46 to use on a putter. So we're in the kind of the clearance rack here, which uh, this might help me, 25% off in addition to um, what the yellow price sticker is. So like, for example, this one here, a two ball white hot, uh, Odyssey putter is $39.99. So of course, 25% off would drop that to 30 bucks. So uh, I like this because it's longer, uh, longer shafts. This grip, as you can see, is very worn, however. Um, and it looks like whoever had this putter drew their own alignment line on here with a pen, which is, I mean, it, it seems useful looking down at it, but that's one I'll consider here. There's also some very, cheap old putter models that could save me and put me quite a bit under the budget like this one. Got a little Tommy Armour, very uh, old school blade type putter for $4, which of course with the discount saved me a whopping $1 uh, with the 25% discount. So there is a lot of putters here. I'm going to be using the putting, the putting green here to try some out and see what uh, works for me. So last time we talked, I was thinking about getting a putter, and I had mentioned this one, white hot, uh, two ball. Somebody, whoever last had it, drew kind of their alignment aid on here, which I actually like a lot. Uh, it's gonna help, uh, of course. It's a little bit longer than normal, probably uh, in that 38, 37 inch range. Uh, I've kind of wondered if that would help me putting at all, but just the extra weight up there to maybe balance things out. Uh, so I'm gonna go with this, despite the very worn grip uh, and I mean, the condition of course isn't awesome either. It's a little bit older, but uh, I think the white hot uh, two ball 
going to be in my bag as my putter. And that's going to wrap up my set of clubs. Uh, and then my golf bag here, uh, ping stand bag here. And you can see here at $49.99, it's going to get the job done. That's a pretty solid deal for a stand bag here. So that's my, uh, that's my set there. It's going to be just under 500. Okay, so I'm going to start with driver and try to build myself out with my woods. My goal is to keep my budget with my driver and ferry wood under $200 so I can give my, leave myself $300 for everything else. Driver for me is important because I want it to be nice and forgiving and also adjustable if possible. So I'm first looking at a section here, the tightest clubs. So with generations and changes, um, the 9... 10 was one of the first adjustable drivers that came out with, with Titleist. Today we have the TS, TSI and TS drivers in 2020. Um, but 910 would be a great option. So then I've got one right here. Got the Titleist 910 D3 9.5 Stiff Flex. And it's at 111.99. So this is a good start right here. I'm going to start building my bag out with this club here. Okay, so now. Fairy wood. As I mentioned, I want to try and keep this under $200 if, if I can. So I did happen to look on the secondswing.com website. We're at Minnetonka location, so I selected the Minnetonka location to try and find a specific club that's under $100. So I selected all the filters on, on, that, on that website to try and find what I'm looking for. So I did notice here, and I found it right here, the Callaway XR. The 17 degrees, so it's like a four wood, and it is at $79. So $80 essentially, this puts me at about one, 190 between the two, so it keeps me under that $200 budget. I believe I can probably find some irons to try and fill out my bag here. I love that this fairy wood's gonna help gap between my driver and how far the, the irons are gonna go. I'm probably not gonna get a hybrid in my, in my bag, just with a limit of $500 budget, I'm probably not gonna go with the hybrid. I don't usually play a hybrid too often anyway. I usually play a three iron most of the time. But this is gonna be a good in-betweener. So with 17 degrees of loft on it, it's gonna be in between my driver and my three iron. Okay, so one of the bonus areas at second swing are the clearance bins. You can definitely find some pretty unique golf clubs. There's some pretty good steals that you will find. The exciting thing that I like coming over here right now is we actually have additional 25% off all clearance stickers. So if I can find an iron set that's in about that $100 range, it may or may not have like a pitching wedge with it. I can try and find like a Volky wedge to add with that. This is gonna help keep my budget down a lot. So I'm gonna look here and see what we have here first. So the challenge for me is gonna be trying to find like a stiff flex as opposed to a regular flex. Stiff or extra, extra flex. And something that's got a little bit of workability to it as well. Uh, these ones here, the grips are a little bit worn, so I don't want to go with that route there. It's hiding back here. All right. Let's see here. So clearance sticker's got 99. So this would be $75 with the 25% off. Got the Ping i3 Plus irons. Three through nine iron. So as I mentioned, it may not include a pitching wedge with it. I don't have a problem with that. I can definitely help build out my set to include a bulky, say a 48 degree wedge and help work on my gapping with my, with my wedge game there as well. So this is what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and work with. So right now I'm just a little bit under $300 with, with my budget. I got some wedges, a putter, a bag, and maybe even some bonus items I can maybe add in here too to my budget. So I mentioned that I need to find myself a pitching wedge. That is gonna be very, very important to me. So I'm gonna look over here and see if I can find something that's got about 48 degrees of loft on it. I may need to tweak a little, the lofts on these just a little bit just to try and make it work. And we can show you how I do that there as well as we go through this process. Okay, bonus. So this is Titleist Volky SM6 48 degree wedge, it's 50 bucks, so $49.99. This is gonna flow really well with my set with regards to gapping. Uh, so this would be a good option for my pitching wedge. And then I always like to try and match my wedges up if I can. I, I like, I like bulky wedges a lot, so they're, they're a good option. So 
I'm going to try and find something in the 53 to 54 degree range next. And then I'm going to try and find like a 58 to a 60 degree wedge to try and help with my gapping and separate those clubs by about four to six degrees apart. 54 degree wedge, that one right down here. Like the old spin milled, this is the, the rusty spin milled wedge. 54 degrees, get 10 degrees of bounce on it. Very nice, $39. I'm gonna go with this here as well. So I've got a 48 to 54. What I'll probably do is bend this 54 to 53 and then find a 58 degree wedge. This looks in pretty good shape. So I mentioned looking in pretty good shape. I want to make sure the grooves are in, in excellent shape. So I can, I can see here, these grooves are really nice and clean. This actually, this club's a steal for, for $29. So this is a 58 degree Volky wedge. So that'll complete my wedges. Okay, so off to find a putter. While I was over in this clearance section here before, I did notice there was something that stood out to me that was really shiny. So this is a uh, Callaway Od or an Odyssey putter now. It's a Odyssey prototype putter. It looks like it's in pretty good condition here too. The clearance sticker on for 49 bucks. So with the additional 25% off, that's gonna be a steal. One thing I do like about it is it's got 34, it's 34 inches in length. So with me being 5'9", I want to make sure that I get my eye position directly over the ball, so I don't want to have a putter that's too long for me or too short for me. And I know with traditional putters, 34 inches is perfect there too. So 37.50 for a Odyssey old prototype putter that's in exceptionally good shape. That is a steal. So now I've got to find a bag to put all these clubs in. A little old ping carry bag here. Stand still works. It's a bonus. Straps are still in pretty good shape here. I believe it's yeah, 49 bucks. So that's a that's a steal for one of these for one of these bags here too. So now I've got something to put my clubs in. And then it's time to kind of add up and see if I have anything left over or not. Alright, so I'm on my way over to get checked out. And I just added everything up and I noticed that I got to about 463.50 essentially. So I'm still quite well under the budget here. So one of the great things that Second Swing has in their stores is this 3 to 35 section. So they have golf gloves, they have hats, they have golf balls. All items here are 3 for 35. So whatever, you know, I've got a great option here to add in a couple of different things to make sure my golf game is pleasant when I play. And one of the great things about the 3 for 35 option is I can mix and match. It doesn't have to be three gloves, doesn't have to be three hats. It could be a glove, it could be hat and balls. So I'm going to try and find a glove, probably some golf balls, and also maybe throw on a hat there too. And I'm about $2 under my budget. So as I mentioned, the 9-iron with the Ping i3 Plus loft is to 43 degrees of loft on it. With these other three wedges, what I'm trying to work on is kind of gapping. So I have a 48 degree wedge and then I have a 54 and a 58. I want to make this as close and consistent as we can across the board. So ideally I would have a five degree gap between each wedge. So I'd keep the 48 at 48. What I would do is I'd bend this 54 to 53 and then keep the, keep the 58 at 58. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend this 54 a degree. And it's basically at 53 already. <laughs> okay, Thomas, we've got 14 clubs each here. We can kind of go through them quickly here. Uh, but starting off, we'll just start with you and your kind of the top of your set. So driver, fairway. I'm kind of seeing from a distance here what it looks like. It looks like you maybe invest a little bit there uh, at the top of your set and then uh, kind of trim things down the rest of the way. But uh, what do you got at the top of your bag? Yeah, I did invest a little bit more in the driver. So I've got the Titleist 910 D3. Nine and a half degrees. It is adjustable, so this is one of the first tightless driver heads that was adjustable. So if I notice the spin rate looks a little bit too high, I could definitely adjust the, the loft on this a little bit if it was necessary there too. So driver nine ten D three nine and a half. 
I went to a forward instead of a three-wood, so I'm going to try and help gap my bag adequately. I didn't sure. get a hybrid or a driving iron. I have a three iron with the other with the iron. So I went with a 17 degree Callaway X Hot Pro. So this is going to be my fairway finder when the if the driver is not working out for me there as well, or if I need to maybe lay up mm -hmm. 270, 280, something short of the short of a bunker or something like that. Um, irons. So irons, I went with the Ping i3 Plus. This was a this was steel. Showcasing our, our clearance section. So we talked about those those clubs that are under two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, these clubs were in, had a sticker ninety nine dollars clearance. Plus we had a bonus extra twenty five percent off right now any clearance item. So seventy five bucks were three through nine iron with the with the Ping. It doesn't come with a pitching wedge, so I had to add in a pitching wedge myself. That's part of the reason why the price was just a little bit a little sure. bit less. So, but, so then I went with bulky wedges with mm -hmm. my 48, 54, which actually already was 53 degrees aloft on it, and then 58. So I have a five degree gap between okay. my nine iron pitching wedge, sand wedge, and lob wedge. Nice. So, so, so good gapping. So these, these clearance items that you refer to, that your irons, and then uh, I think for me, the putter, they're not online. So you come into the store and these items for, you know, some of them are $3 that you can get uh, at second swing as well. So, uh, but for me, Started with driver, went Cleveland High Bore XL. I liked this because it's a, a tour shaping nine and a half degrees. Also with the Pro Launch Red uh, Graf Alloy shaft, which I liked as well. Um, and it's only 119.99, so I liked that deal. It's in great shape. And then down to the the fairy wood here. I went much more uh, budgetary, so to speak, at the top of my bag. So I went Tour Edge Exotic CB4 uh, fairy wood, 15 degrees for basically for gapping purposes. There also went down to a Wilson Staff FG Tour hybrid there. So those are maybe a little bit more, uh, not as popular brands there, but I wanted to just kind of get through that top of the set so I could get a, a, a comfortable iron set there for me. Uh, so my iron set then is Ben Hogan Apex Edge, three through pitching wedge. It is certainly an older model, uh, but Ben Hogan does construct their irons pretty well. And uh, I like the player's cavity type shape there. So uh, my bag, you know, these brands aren't as uh, big name per se as as yours, but I do like the way they look uh, all the way down the bag for me. And so, and then of course the wedges I went with just a 54 degree um, is exotics. That's something I probably won't use a ton. Uh, it's got to be the right yardage for me. And then a uh, RTX three Cleveland 60 degree wedge there, which I probably will use a little bit more frequently throughout our round. Sounds good. Now, what did we do for putters? So putter, I got. Uh, found a, what is this? This is a $30 with the, the discount, a white hot two ball. Uh, okay. And it's got a little bit longer shaft to it, which I was- Hold up. What? You see, got was, a longer golf shaft there? See, I was- Is that an omelet putter? Maybe. <laughs> but I was curious because I thought you would have seen this. I did not see. You must there, have got so to that I was like, oh, first. well. Can we, can we do a little trade? Well, what do you have to, to offer here? Well, I also have a clearance putter here too. So this would be 37.50. It's a very, very clean Odyssey prototype putter. Oh, I recommend taking a look at that. If I could get that Odyssey putter in, instead, I would feel much more comfortable out there knowing that I've putted with say, an unlocked putter the last year and a half. I will say the face on this is very clean and in, in good shape. Do you have uh, enough room left in your budget? Just barely. Just barely? Just barely, because okay. I had about $13 to spare, so I should have enough room for this. If you really want to switch and deal with this kind of rough grip, you there. hand that back. You hand this to me now. You're not getting it back. Yeah, fine. You know All what? Right. It's in my bag. I'm being nice to you, but you get your unlock putter. I better make some putts now. No excuse <laughs> now for a poor round of, of putting, but that's the sets we have. Uh, so now you know we're gonna get out to the golf course here soon, play nine holes, and Thomas shot a 32 last time, which was three under par. I don't know. I, wanna, I don't want to put the pressure on you too much there. Yeah, so keep in mind it is November in Minnesota, <laughs> yeah. so this is bonus golf right now. Yes. We're also playing a different golf course, so a different golf course may be a little more challenging than mm -hmm. the last course that we played. Uh, we're playing Bent Creek, so mm -hmm. Bent Creek is in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Um, that course is, I, I've played it a couple of times, I haven't played it very often, but I know if you go long on those greens, you're in trouble. You're not making it right. up and down. So there's some, de it's definitely a little more challenging than uh, the U of M golf course was. So for me, I still want to try and break par, but who knows? I might make a couple of putts and might shoot 32 again, we'll see. I would love to see that, but uh, I'm excited for this round. All right, we're out at Bent Creek. This is the first hole, it's a par five. It's gonna be a dog leg right, a little bit downhill as well. 
Uh, Thomas and I both have our drivers out here. Uh, we're going to try to maybe cut the corner a little bit and give ourselves a good chance for uh, really to get on in two and have an eagle putt. That's pretty good there. Cut the corner. Well, I'm happy with my first drive of the day. First swing, we didn't get a chance to warm up on the range. Middle of the fairway, got about 205 to the hole. It's cold uphill. It's gonna play probably another 10 yards uphill, so I'm gonna hit four iron. Oh, that looks great. 188? Yeah, sounds about right. Probably right. playing about 200. Okay. Or maybe 195. Still might be the same club. All right, in the fairway off the tee, I've got 188 yards. Uh, I heard, overheard Thomas say it's playing a little uphill, so probably closer to 200. I'm going to take a five iron here. Maybe not swing 100%, but uh, try to keep it controlled here. All right. I think we right avoided distance. the green side bunker just off the green. I've got my Cleveland RTX 3 60 degree wedge here. Just trying to loft it up just enough to get onto the fringe or the green and let it roll out. I know it's gonna run away from me, so a little delicate here. Not too bad. So first shot around the green of the day, I'm just on the fringe, I'm gonna putt it. I got a lot of right to left break on this putt, so I'm working on my speed to die this around the hole. Got work coming back. Mm. Well, the short game's gonna have to prove a tad, but par's par, right? All right, the second hole here, par three, playing downhill at about 100, I think 23 yards is the official number here. There is some bunkers surrounding the green, but I think the pin's in a generous spot where um, if we hit it you know, in the general direction of the flag, the bunker shouldn't be a problem. So uh, actually kind of a birdie chance here if you could put one kind of close with a wedge. Is that there? All right. Oh, nice shot. Try to make up for that missed putt on the last hole. I like where you're at better than where I'm at, Drew. Really? Because I see a lot more room between me and the hole than what you have. Yeah, there's not much grass on these greens right now with them sa being sanded. If mine misses, I'm going to be down with where you're at right now. Smart play playing under the hole. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Definitely didn't up here, up, end up here on accident. All right. And got rewarded. Thanks for the putter, Tommy. There we go. That's not bad. Two birdies on this par three? That's a bonus. That makes up for the yeah. par five. Up downhill enough. So you've got 250 to the bunker. Looks like some OB left again. OB left. About 360 is the hole. Okay. Well, I did hit a decent tee shot on one, so I'm going to hit driver here. Kind of downhill and uphill, about 350 something to the hole. And there's a bunker on the right there. It's 270 to carry, according to Thomas. So I should have enough to get that. So I'm going to rip the driver here. Well, let's see it. Still got the honor. That's true, I too. Sneaking towards the rough. Not a problem. Just a little bit off the fairway. Yeah. It 
drifting towards kind of my line. Oh, bunker. Oh, it did dive in there. Yep. So there's a lot of, a lot of sand in this bunker. So I'm going to have a hard time to make sure I have good stability with my feet. So I'm going to really focus so, a lot on trying to keep my feet nice and stable during this, this swing to try okay. and get good contact. It's one of those awkward shots, 90 yards from the sand, plus a tree in the way. Went for it. Sounded like solid contact. I hit it good. This tree got in the way. Run the upslope. Uh, I've got my 60 degree Cleveland RTX3 here. I do see kind of a little hill in front of the pin there. I kind of want to make sure I get over that and uh, hopefully it'll land soft enough to stay close to the hole. Well, we're putting. Know that part. Bunker to bunker. Oh, very nice. Are you kidding me? Ugh. That's a bonus, guys. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's three on the scorecard. There's there's no yeah. room on there's no room for a picture on the scorecard. Maybe a little quick dot at the end of the putt as well. Oh no. Got scared. Alright, good second putt. <laughs> good clarification. Second putt was good. So Thomas, we recently shot a video on hitting bunker shots and you said you're not scared when you go in the sand. That almost sometimes it's better to be in the sand than maybe the rough. Yeah, Why I was able to, I was able to generate some spin on the ball. So I had a half decent lie here. I'm thinking about holding this bunker shot. I'm not just trying to get it on the green. A lot of professional golfers when they're playing, they'd prefer to be in the sand than around the green because they can get some bad lies around the green. So as long as the sand's good, for sure. I was yeah. feeling comfortable about that shot. Because you did get some spin on that and it bit nicely and then just dropped in the cup. That, that, was, really that cool. was perfect. That was actually the first bunker shot I played without a PM grind in a long time too. So <laughs> You put that one in the yeah, bag. That was good. <laughs> okay, the fourth hole at Bent Creek, a par four, about 435 from the tips here. We're going to go downhill as well. Uh, there is some OB to the right and then some kind of tree line uh, down the left and the right as well. So keeping it straight is important here. We also want to get down there on a, a kind of a lengthier par four here. Straight ball, playing a long way into that wind. Not much wind, but it's definitely affected the ball. You kind of feel a little bit more as we're on kind of the top of the course here. Yep. All right. Leaking a little left. I have 147 to the hole. The pin's tucked right in the back of the green here, so I'm going to play a little bit more conservative and try and come up just a little bit short if I can. Hit a shot where I won't go over the green at least. That is drawing back right at the hole. Right at it. Yeah, that's exactly what you're trying to do. That's exactly what I was trying to do. About 15 feet short. What do you think of those irons so far? They're pretty good for <laughs> 75 bucks. It's <laughs> a pretty good deal. You're stuffing your approaches right now. Well, I got to keep it low here. But as Thomas alluded to, keeping it below the hole is important here. And this makes it difficult with bunkers kind of protecting the green. I'm going to punch an eight. I'm going to try to keep it right of these bunkers and give myself a kind of a longer uphill putt. Hopefully I can two putt that for par. I'm switching clubs. Stood over that with an eight iron, and I thought that's going to be too high of loft, so I'm going to take a six iron instead. Sit down. Well, I did exactly what I was trying not to do. Went past the green, and I have the world's most difficult chip coming back. So that one might be a little bit of work, but I think you got some game. Uh, not enough for that. <laughs> You almost putt that thing. I mean, it's that's not a terrible idea. 
<laughs> I'll wave to it as it goes past. The more I think about putting, the more I think it's not a terrible play. <laughs> so you get this thing rolling down the hill, it's not going to stop. Jeez. Just as I thought it had a delicate shot on the first hole. This couldn't be more delicate. Well, that's not what you want to do. That one was an amateur mistake. I, yeah, I know. You didn't want to leave yourself that same shot. But I did. I did think though, once I hit it, I would have enough momentum to get rolling on the green. But I was wrong. Now I have the same shot. Yeah. Am I gonna give you a read, Thomas? Not quite. Ow. A little right to left putt. I learned something from Drew's chip as it was coming down. Uphill. Yikes. I can literally see both lines. My chip shot coming down and then your putt. So I shouldn't have any issues reading this thing. But it seemed like you put a good firm stroke on that one. Mm. So Drew, I mentioned that you made an amateur mistake. Yes. Uh, the mistake you made was you you mentioned you wanted, you were thinking about bogey. Yeah. To make bogey, you needed to get that the shot here past the hole for yeah. the first shot. Even if you left yourself 30 feet coming back, it would have been quite okay. Mm -hmm. the, your mistake there was the compounded because you left the next shot above the hole there yep. again there too. So you needed to make sure that this one here got past the hole. Actually, you could just throw it like that. But you needed to <laughs> make sure the ball got past the hole to leave yourself a chance to on the mm -hmm. next shot. You didn't want to be above the hole. Right. Yeah. You'd rather be safe than sorry there. Make sure you're going back uphill for your par, for even if it's a 30 footer. But I, didn't ma I made that mistake, and now I have to live with the double bogey. It's good stuff. Driver? You can play this way, uh, this one two ways. You can try and get driver up around the green area, or you could lay up to 100 yards and leave yourself a nice 100 yard wedge shot. Feeling pretty good about hitting this driver fairly straight, so I'm just gonna stick with driver. All right. You can definitely learn by uh, the golf courses you play. You see a lot of divots on the tee. So it's a pretty good explanation. Of the hole. Of the hole. Whether you would want to maybe hit an iron off mm -hmm. the tee or if it's a driver hole. As you see some dead turf on the, on the tee here. There's probably an indication mm -hmm. why. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm just hit, aim a little left and hit my little fade to the middle of the fairway. So this tee shot looks a little narrow just by looking at it here, as you might be able to tell. I don't have the confidence just looking at it to hit driver. I'm going to take something a little shorter. I've got my Wilson Staff FG Tour hybrid here that I'm going to hit. Hopefully get something to make sure it's in play, stay out of the trees. Last hole I had to deal with some trees. Didn't quite work out so well, so I want to make sure I don't have to deal with that here. Little left, but I think it held its line be, pretty well. It's, it's definitely in play. So Drew, that was some pretty smart play you just did there back on the tee. Yeah, well, I'm coming up here and I see how the fairway kind of gets skinny here, and you just happen to split it right perfectly between two bunkers. So <laughs> it was an aggressive move. Getting up here and I see how the hole looks. I definitely think I made the right play, even though I'm in the rough. I have a look at the hole here. This is a much smarter play than my play. So, and I know we've been, you've been hammering the idea all day that keep it below the hole. So I'm going to take the 60 degree instead of the 54 degree here and swing and, you know, if I leave it a little short, I leave it a little short, but I don't want to deal with what I did last hole and go too far. So 92 yards, 60 degree wedge here. Did I hit too far anyway? It's putting. Oh, I tugged it a little bit. Trying to land this about 10 paces short and let it bounce up to the hole. Got 49 yards to the hole.
could be another one of those days a lot of tap-ins. Yeah, that's how it was with the uh, $1,000 budget challenge. Smoke a wedge too far. And then I leg putt. This is running about 15 feet past before it smokes the flag. I mean, Thomas, to your point, I don't see any divots on this tee box. So it seems to me like it's a go, go for it at the driver hole here. Wasn't a very good swing. Just leaking a little bit to the right. Hopefully I'll find some, some gaps over there on the right side. Speaking of right. I think we've got some golf course over there though. Okay, so I got 80 yards here. We got some tree trouble, so I gotta make sure I get this up. So I'm gonna hit kind of like a little semi-flop shot right up into the sun. So this will be a, a fun shot to hit. Got the tree a little bit. Uh, the dr tree just got me a little bit, so front edge. 86 yards, I'm on the wrong hole. If there, that'll give you an idea of how far right I went. I went with my tee shot. I'm on the wrong golf hole. So I gotta go back, I got 86 yards. Um, I kinda gotta go over these trees here. You can't really see the flag from here, so I'm just gonna put a good swing on it. At this point, I'm trying to play for par. Got that old fat. That's a nice shot. You are burning edges today. Every single time. Sand over this ball as well. Hmm. I saw that coming right and it did not. A couple of bogeys there. All right, the seventh hole at Bent Creek here. Par four, just over 400 yards. It looks like it's kind of got a wider fairway than maybe most have so far. So I'm going to you know, hit the driver. I think Thomas is too. I've had a couple of wayward tee shots here that have cost me some shots. So I'm trying to get back in the fairway here uh, with this one. Yeah, that's a draw. Pretty straight, another high one. Not quite the right fit for me, but it's straight. Yeah, I've noticed that's going a little bit higher than... High and spinny, yeah. ...than usual for you. Should be okay. Just down the left side, might have tree trouble. But I'm punching out again. This is... Uh, becoming a theme for me. I get it far enough, but uh, not straight enough. So I got a seven iron here, I'm gonna punch it out and I'm trying to try and learn from last time to not go too far because the last time I got a little aggressive, kind of did a pull hook on it and it went too far. I gotta make sure I keep this below the hole. It's just crept onto the green there. But uphill putt, that's what I wanted. Okay, I got 85 yards here. Got my 58 out. It hit about a nine o'clock 58. Landed a little bit short of the hole. Don't want to go long again. I keep mentioning that as we're playing all these holes. So I'm gonna try and come up just a little bit short of the hole if I can. Throw up there. That was definitely way too conservative. Got a little heavy. Putting. Putting. Settle. Settle. It's still creeping past. Stop moving. Mm. 
There you go. And a par three is playing about 185 yards here for the eighth hole. There is a bunker kind of short and left protecting the hole a little bit there with that pin left. Uh, might be one to aim more at the center of the green than go out the pin. Uh, I know, I don't know, Thomas, what club do you got? I have six iron. We both have six iron here for this shot, so. At six iron, I'm just aimed about 20 feet right of the flag here. As you mentioned, I want to stay away from left. Very nice. That's a good swing here, too. Just a little left the pin. I got more aggressive than I wanted to be, but. Another burnt edge. Oh, that didn't move at all. It didn't move. I thought that would go come back left a little bit. Dang it. So the ninth hole at Bent Creek. This is an interesting hole because it's going to go kind of a sharp dog leg left here. Um, off, and you can see off the tee, there's a you know, tree line left, and you got kind of the bunkers out there on the right. So you got to be kind of precise with A, how far you hit it, and then B, of course, the line that it's on. So uh, we're trying to hit it about 280 yards here. So I know Thomas has the driver out. I've got my three wood out here. So hopefully we'll put it in play here. No draw on that one. I think it's gonna be okay. That's I think left. I got over it. I went up and over at trees and I didn't try to. So this is what you got here. I found myself in trouble over here on the right side of the fairway, or not even on the fairway, I'm just in the rough. Just got enough swing here to just get my swing past that tree. Don't want to hurt myself. I'm going to hit the 48 degree wedge, probably like about a 1030 swing. Try and get this thing back on the middle of the green. Got a little window to get through here. Didn't see where that ended up. Thought it was a pretty good shot. Oh, it's just on the right side of the green. I got 85 yards. I uh, have a little bit of a gap here. I'm gonna try and kind of hit a knockdown wedge through that. I'm gonna get really cute with this, and of course that works all the time. So we'll see what happens here. <laughs> this is a 54 degree wedge. So I'm trying to keep it like knocked down, low enough under the trees, and then next to the hole. That was one sexy shot. That's it. Great That'll shot. Work. Oh, right. I was going to tell you that, but. <laughs> well, I just, I just misread that. You up. Completely. Good speed, though. You see how the speed right? Yeah. One out of two. Right to left putt from me here. Just trying to die it in the right side of the hole. There you go. Good putt. All right. Well, Thomas, we just wrapped up nine holes with our $500 sets here. Um, you know, kind of an interesting round for us. I know you burned a lot of edges and uh, you drop some of those putts, we're talking a pretty low number for you. But, uh, and of course, the shot of the day, the hole out from the bunker. So that was fun. Uh, yeah. That was really fun to catch on camera, especially. But um, first of all, let's just go kind of down the bag here. So I started with driver and we'll maybe go down to your putter. What did you think about the clubs that you picked and what would you maybe change? Yeah, so the driver, it's, it's really hard when, for me being a better player mm -hmm. and needing a club that really fits my golf swing to have a $500 budget yeah. And then get a driver and get the rest of the clubs in there as well. Yeah. So the driver was probably one of the, the weak spots in my bag today. 
it just was high and spinny. It yeah. was really, it was really hard for me to get it going a little bit further. Now I said it fairly straight. Mm. It was, wasn't bad, but I was definitely leaving some t distance on the table for sure. So that's one that I did notice. It just seemed like it was launching a lot higher. So this was the 910 D3, nine and a half. I could have turned the loft down a little bit yeah. on it, but it just it launched fairly high, and that's just a driver that's you know ten years old essentially. Yep. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a little harder for me to do what it. It's gonna be a little harder for it to do what I want it to do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then I mean, I guess for me in driver, I you know had a couple of really good ones to start the round, and then kind of as I progressed throughout, as when my erratic tendencies off the tee kind of came into play. But I will say that distance on this thing was pretty solid. I was hitting it far enough. Um, I just I, I know one thing I noticed for sure is the sound is extremely loud. It sounds like almost a metal baseball <laughs> bat hitting a golf ball, uh, which. I mean, if that's something that you you know consider quite a bit when buying a driver, that's one thing that might deter you from this. But uh, I thought the performance was pretty solid for something that's you know in that 10 years old type of range. But uh, moving down, I don't know if you even touched your three wood during the round today, but I didn't touch the three wood. There were definitely two or three holes where I could have easily hit three wood and just laid up just a little short of some bunkers. Yeah, I always like to play fairly aggressive when yeah. it comes to this, so I hit the driver a lot more. But there was definitely holes out there designed that I could have easily used this yeah. club laid back 20, 30 yards less and leave myself a nice wedge shot into the greens. There were a couple of times where I probably should have played this club instead and left myself 100 yards in rather than 80 yards in. Mm -hmm. So that was probably me just not thinking. I was yeah. just well, trying to get this. trying to make yeah. birdies. Trying to make birdies, yeah. yeah. But I should have thought about making birdies from my scoring clubs, with my wedges, with yeah. my my trusty 100 yard shot, essentially. Yeah. Well, and I know for you, the irons it, it seemed like you were kind of hitting them exactly how you wanted to you had a couple really good iron shots that you stuffed in there that resulted in a couple birdies and of course another several close calls for birdie as well yeah i hit these irons really well i don't think i had anything over with the irons i don't think i had anything over 15 feet mm -hmm. i think yeah i hit some great great shots into the greens with with these irons here so i was i was pretty impressed with them with that being the the i3 plus you know they're older technology so the lofts aren't super strong or anything like that i could definitely notice there's a little bit of offset on them yeah. Um, but I, I played them pretty well. They were, the, the dot on them is a little more upright, so they were a little bit more upright. I didn't get that adjusted, but I, I played them fine. I, they, yeah. they, were, they were pretty good. They were, they were a steal for me for, for 75 bucks for a three iron through nine iron. That was probably the steal of the, of the day for me. Yeah, you were hitting some really good iron shots there. And I guess I would like to say as well, my irons, I really loved mine too. The Ben Hogan Apex Edge here, three through pitching wedge for 149. Um, and at both par threes, I hit a pretty good shot in there, and then I liked my approach as well in that first hole with a five iron. Um, didn't quite hit on the green, but just off the green, it gave me a, a good chance. So uh, they feel really good. They have a forged feel as well. So uh, that I really liked those irons, and they kind of they have a little bit of offset that I wasn't quite used to, but I got adjusted to that. And I really like the look and the feel and the performance of these ones, which for 150 three through pitch. It's a pretty solid steal right there. That was a pretty solid steal you had. Now, you, you did skip over your hybrid. You mm -hmm. hit that on that one hole where I mentioned, yeah. hey, it's probably a good time to maybe hit something to about 100 <laughs> yeah. yards. You did? I did. I, 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 I had was... 96 yards left. And so, you... I mean, that was, uh, this is, it was, now, this missed the ferry by a few yards, but it was, you know, very easy to control, felt pretty solid. Um, I liked that one. That was a pretty cheap club there, too. I believe that was like 23.99. so. That was a good club there. And then as you move down here towards wedges, I just had two in the bag. I think you had more because of the gapping that you required, but you also hit some really good wedge shots and of course the hole out from the bunker. Yeah, I used all the wedges. I had a lot of shots from kind of inside 125 yards, a couple with the, the, with the, with the 48 that were about 125 last hole and then on that par three as well. Some nice shots with that. Mm -hmm. I, I liked having the more versatile workable, workable wedge as opposed to the wedge with the set. Yeah. That was definitely a, a good option there as well. Volky wedges can't go wrong with them. I hold a bunker shot with them, so I yeah. one for one from, from bunker shots with, with that club, so I, I can't complain. It's a so. pretty solid percentage right there. That's a good sand save percentage. It's better than sand yeah. save. Uh, yeah, I had the two wedges in my bag. I used that 60 degree RTX3 quite a bit. Um, I mean, versatile. I had a pretty solid greenside bunker shot there. Uh, that I, I think I just missed that putt, but it was a pretty good shot out of there as well. And then that last hole where I had to hit that punch wedge shot was with this 54 degree Tour Edge Exotics CB Pro, which is, you know, Tour Edge, you don't think wedges very much, but uh, it performed for me at least in that shot there. So uh, I'm glad I had a solid purchase there. So, and then putters now. So that was the one thing that um, we got interesting for us because yeah. we actually made a swap and um, 
full disclosure, the, the this putter swap did put me, I think, a dollar over 500. So we're a little bit over the budget, but of course, when we initially built the sets, we're both under 500. You got to use a longer, uh, you know, longer shafted putter. How did that work for you? I mean, it felt more comfortable. As you could see in all my putts, I was burning the edge on yeah. every on everything there. Now there was some sand on on the greens, and, and it's also in November right now. The greens are <laughs> rolling pretty good, but uh, yeah, I I rolled okay. It, it was it was pretty good for I think it was like thirty five for thirty dollars or something yep. like that. It, it was a, it was a good find. The only thing I didn't kind of notice was the the grip was kind of wearing off a little yeah. bit there too. And oh, that's yeah. one thing for sure with used golf clubs is you may want to consider the, the condition of the grips on all the golf clubs yeah. there as well there too. So what about the putter with you? Yeah, I was, this club face is still as pure as ever. It's like brand new. Uh, so that was really nice and it felt really solid. Uh, well, I guess it felt soft, but it felt really good uh, off the club face on those putts. Uh, I mean, and I'm, I don't call myself a good putter. Uh, some of the distance control for me was not awesome, but that's just my own doing. Um, I will say the, the look, it looks great for a club. I mean, it's you know what, 37.50 after the discount it was. Um, it looks awesome, and if you like that blade answer style type look, you're really going to enjoy a putter like this that you can find in the clearance rack at Second Swing for under 50 bucks. This is a pretty solid one right here. So uh, I did make that birdie on uh, the par three, second hole, right up the middle with that one. So uh, I really liked the set here, and you know, 500 dollars you can put a set together like this, and you, you still broke par. I actually beat my score from last time, so. Um, all things considered, I think this is probably a success. Yeah, it was definitely a success. Was there anything that you would have changed? Now, $500 budget, it, it is challenging. Yeah. Definitely is a, a challenging test, but is there any clubs that you may have switched out and maybe changed in, in your bag? I probably would have added a wedge, maybe taken out a one of these clubs at the top here, probably gone to something like you did a four wood. I would have tried to find one of those instead of maybe two clubs at 15, 19 degrees. I would have probably tried to do a four wood and made sure my gapping down the set was a little bit more precise. But uh, other than that, I really liked the clubs that I picked out. One thing I would have probably tried to do if I had a lot of time is I would have searched the Second Swing store, I mean, the Second Swing online, and punched in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the filter below average, or, mm. and just kind of look at some pictures of some golf clubs. You can really find some really good steals yeah. on some drivers that maybe have a couple of sky marks on them, a couple, a couple of generations old. I would yeah. have been able to put up with it. It still would have performed perfectly fine. It's just visually, you'll see maybe a couple of sky marks on it. So to save some money, you can definitely try look at our below average section, and that would be a great way to save some money yeah. and find something a little newer in generation. I know that's exactly what you did last time in our $1,000 budget uh, video with your irons. You went in, found, I think, a ping eye blade for under 500. You got all the irons, and it was uh, technically they're categorized below average, but they performed really well for you during that video as well. So. Um, we also want to thank Ben Creek for letting us out here today. Uh, the course is in great shape for November. I mean, first of all, getting to play golf in November in Minnesota is a blessing in, in itself. But we had a great round of golf today. The per weather's perfect. We were able to get outside and uh, test out some of these clubs for under $500. And uh, I think it worked out pretty well for us. So uh, the viewers, if you liked our video, please like it and subscribe on the, to our channel as well. Uh, we love putting this content together for you and we love the feedback that you guys give us as well. So we'll make sure to keep pumping it out for you. But Thomas, thanks for joining me, getting your set together, providing your feedback. It was all really great. Yeah, any time on the golf course is a, a great time in November.